Hey everyone, CJ here. Today we are on our way to the University of Illinois Chicago to meet the Westboro Baptist Church. great fun and right now we're going to follow them to their next protest at another Hillel. Oh hi Lucy. I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions about what you do here and whatnot. How long have you been with the church? We are to testify that the Lord Jesus Christ is returning and he's punishing this nation for their rebellion and for their sinfulness and for the fact that this nation refuses to obey. You focused on fags, Jews, dead soldiers. We focus on the disobedient. Okay. Is there a... This nation has embraced the fags and since this nation has embraced the fags, we focus on the fact that that is a... a um, what will destroy a nation. If you look at right. the scriptures, that's what destroyed the nations. Okay. When they embrace the facts. I know you, uh, at least the church, plan to protest at one of uh, Lady Gaga's concerts. Do you plan to do any more of those? We protest where there is an audience. Something that interested me was that they said Lady... The reason we focused on her is because she said God... God uh, loves the gays. Right. What, what interested me was that when they went to protest there, they said she had a whore's forehead. I believe that was from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3. What does that mean to have a whore's forehead? Is that just a metaphor, or is that something more literal? Like, how, how, what distinguishes a whore's forehead from a regular forehead? It's a ways. You know exactly what it means. There's no, there's no confusion there. All right. You know what a whore is. She whores herself out. She calls her filthiness. Right. Uh, right. Holy, right. Calls her filthiness a thing to aspire to. Okay. By the way she presents herself, the words that she speaks. Right. That's a whore. Okay. So th this, that's not, there's no oh, confusion with that. Right. I just thought it was interesting to talk about her forehead like that. Three. The signs you use are iconic. Uh, they really stand out. The lettering you use on them, is that something that you guys designed yourself, or did you uh, get that font from somewhere else? It's just how it came to develop. Okay. And it just kind of blossomed from there. All right. The fact that we need to put short messages on something that somebody can read. This generation is sound by generation. Yeah. So it's got to be short, to the point. And truthful, but we have to give you the truth. Okay. Or if you continue in your sin and die in your sin, it's on our hands. All right. Now you get a lot of counter protests too, obviously. So would you say what's like the best counter protest sign you've ever seen? I'm sure you've been to a lot of these. Best sign? Yeah, like other people waving their signs around, the stuff they come up with. It's all, it's all foul, foul. I, all right. I wouldn't even quantify that. Bring it down a little bit. Some people have suggested that like Glenn Beck should run for president in 2012, something like that. He would be better than Obama at least, right? Obama's gonna get this land destroyed by the Lord. Oh. Uh -huh. What he's doing 
Okay. So more fine the fat. Supporting abortion. Right. Now, do you know about the Twilight series by Stephanie Meyer? I personally don't. Oh, uh, okay. No, of it, but I personally don't. It's about it's a sort of vampire romance story. That that would be kind of ungodly, right? Honey, you, that's that's more holy. That's more holy than what is this church over here? The Unitarian. Yeah. You, the, oh, they have a the Unitarian church over here. Preach that they speak to the Word of God and they're filthy. Well, now, did you say right? homosexuality is bad? Oh, I'm anything okay, but take great. Care. Would you say that God hates Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfort? God hates everyone. Well, Kirk Cameron specifically and Ray Comfort and their ministry that they have. They're a way of the master ministry, they're apologetics and whatnot. Okay. What about, would you say that Carl Sagan is in hell? He, he, he was the one who had that show Cosmos, you know, the billions and billions. Everybody, the 99% of this damned race is going to be in hell or in hell. Does that mean they'll be in hell for billions and billions of years? Eternity. Okay. Tell us for eternity. All right. That, does God hate the flying spaghetti monster? Okay, now you're done with your interview because you're just mocking. I, I'm not mocking you. I'm wondering that people you're seriously done with follow your this. You, when you're not talking about substantial matters of heaven, hell, and eternity, you're talking about the flying monster. All right. All right. Fine. Uh, I would just wonder, are there any churches that are too extreme for you? Not too permissive, because I know you don't like that the Unitarians, the Jews and whatnot. Are there any that are too don't. extreme? Not too extreme? Too, too restrictive for you guys. You either serve God or you don't serve God. That's the two demographics. All right. trying to break it up into a bunch of other muddy waters. What would you do if like tomorrow it was 100% proven that there actually is no God? How would you react to that? You're hellbound. He will call his talking even having that come out of your mouth. I'm surprised that the Lord has struck uh, you down. Just right hypothetically, here. just wondering okay, what we're I'm done. I'm done. I'm just curious. You're not curious. You're a mocker. You're scoffering. You're mm -hmm. acting like you're all composed. And, oh, I'm going to trip her up. Okay. You're headed for hell. You, you do know there is no God, though, right? Because you do know that. I mean, that's pretty obvious. It's almost full. Almost completely come in. You know what he says. I know, but, but you know what? But we're here. Yeah. I got a question.